A good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us, of course. Well, yes, of course. And uh, a reminder, as always, this is a live broadcast and it is highly preferably interactive and so we do have that little chat box down below we want to hear from you you know we might use it in the show as long as it's interesting to us of course absolutely and uh you know do gotta say uh if you're watching this or listening to this after the fact you can still reach out to us on our facebook page uh at fat and black connection you can also send us a twitter message at fat black connect uh or you can hit us up on instagram at fat n black connect um there's lots of ways to get a hold of us we're on youtube fat and black connection so please uh make sure take those opportunities tell us what we're doing great what we suck at um you know we just want some feedback absolutely we love it we love it so james today's episode we've got a very special guest who's going to be on later um yeah yeah mr joe joe mag magdalena uh, you know, somebody, uh, we went to high school with, um, you know, from the way, way back machine and, uh, works in the game and in- gaming industry today. And, uh, I look forward to hearing from him and getting some insights into the gaming industry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. But before we get there, there's a couple of things that have, uh, of course come out in the last week that I thought were interesting. And so I wanted to talk about them. Uh, First and foremost, probably something you're super stoked about. Disney Plus has announced the Muppets <laughs> Haunted Mansion. Yes, sir. That commercial, the great Gonzo and Pep, Pepe the King Fron. Oh, I love those guys. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what they do with this. I actually, when you first sent it to me and you kind of told me, I was like, are they, I thought it was almost going to be a, uh, like a Nightmare Before Christmas type takeover of the haunted mansion at the park but then i saw it was like when you uh i, I went on their i went on the muppets twitter page and and the announcement was there i was like oh nice it's gonna be like a little like a little film so that should yes, be fun. As, as long as eddie murphy's not involved because then... <laughs> uh that film was hot garbage and uh, uh, it had moments it had moments but not enough moments to make it uh, a a great film well, considering they were, you know, just had the huge success of Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, um, they were they were riding high on that. Let's make rides into movies. And that just wasn't a good I, I it just wasn't really a good fit. I mean, I, I think if they had, if they had really it almost seems like the script was kind of rushed. It didn't seem like it was really flushed out. I think they could have done if they had flushed it out a little bit better. I think it could have been a much better film. Hopefully they'll do a better job with Jungle Cruise coming out soon, starring Dwayne the Rock Johnson and uh, Emily Blunt, uh, aka yes. Mary, the new Mary Poppins. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm that looks like it should be pretty good. I mean, just the the single the trailer that I saw what looked pretty phenomenal, but we all know that trailers sometimes can be deceiving. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll see. So, um, yeah. So speaking of Disney, some more Disney stuff. Uh, Disney Parks uh, came out with a a reveal video for the Avengers Campus cast member costumes. Did you take a look at that? I did. I actually just looked at that right before we uh, started. And those those are those are some nice uh, those some nice outfits. I wouldn't mind working at the Avengers Campus. That's for sure. That would be one of. Hey, uh, do we get to choose where we work? Because if we do. I want to work over there. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, Disney always does an amazing job uh, with their costumes for the different rides, for the different areas in the park. And uh, this is no exception. Um, I'm so looking forward, uh, especially to eating some shawarma when uh, we go down to California Adventure. (laughs) Actually, you know what? I think, I think one of the things uh, there's, there's only like, I would, I would want to work the Indiana Jones ride. Cause that those costumes look dope. The one place I would not want to work is Tomorrowland. So I'm hoping that those costumes aren't anything like those ones at Tomorrowland. Cause those look hot. Not a, not a <laughs> fan of the jumpsuits, are you? No, it's just like, they look, they don't look comfortable. I mean, they don't look like they breathe well. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't disagree. So 
on last week's episode, uh, we, we did an episode, Revenge of the Fifth, or our Star Wars episode. And yeah. we, we talked about, um, you know, uh, before we got into the Star Wars piece, we talked about the Disney princesses. And we had talked about uh, Mulan and how you didn't feel that she should be a part of that list. And right. um, I had asked if maybe it was a racial issue because she's Asian and you, you, you very quickly uh, said no. Um, but I do, I do, I do gotta say, I do gotta say going back and re listening to our episode uh, where you ranked episode eight. Um, you, you said it was your second least favorite. You said it was just barely better than uh, the Phantom Menace. And, and I've got to ask, are you sure that you're not a racist? And maybe because Kelly Marie Tran was so heavily focused on in that film that you ranked it that low. Bro, you are so out of pocket for that. I didn't even, I didn't, she was not, I didn't even remember her. I, I almost didn't even remember her. Like, Do you not remember her because she's Asian? No, bro, you better stop that right now for sure. Okay, okay. Like, no, I, I, that that was just where I felt I just like we that was the only movie um I was looking back at our at the at the rankings and that was the only movie that we were we were miles apart on everything mm-hmm. else we were like either I was ahead of you or you were right behind me or whatever so we were very we were very close on everything else except that one yeah, and I was just trying to figure out why. And like I said, I went back and I re-listened to the episode, and I just... I told I you know what I'm not gonna even lie. I totally I mean it's not that I forgot her, uh, um, but that's not that is not the reason why okay. I ranked it where I ranked it. So, okay, fair enough, yes. fair enough. And then of course, lastly, uh, not the MCU, but in the Marvel universe of itself, the Venom trailer dropped. Oh yes. I am stoked about that movie because for for the years, like we have never seen, like Carnage has never even been a, a, a thought because of just how demented and and evil Carnage is. And so um, when I saw when I saw Cletus Cassidy at the end of Venom, uh, the first film, I was like. Oh yes, and then um, I think right before the Super Bowl or something, they dropped like a little, just a little teaser uh, teaser trailer um, for "Let There Be Carnage," and the trailer just dropped yesterday. Um, I get Fandango alerts for new trailers, and that one I am stoked to see a full out Venom costume. I mean, just it looked it looked amazing. So I'm I'm really excited to see what they do with this i will tell you i haven't seen the first venom uh was never a huge fan um of the eddie brock and and venom concept uh not that i won't watch it i just didn't want to pay to see it in the theater um i did go back uh after you you mentioned that you wanted to talk about this i went back and watched the ending of venom to see that that drop in yeah. And for me, the most entertaining part was uh, when uh, Eddie Brock is walking down the corridor with a um, with a corrections officer. That corrections officer was actually Bellick from uh, Prison Break, and he played a corrections officer in that show. And I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" Uh, yeah. so, so that was the highlight for me. Um, but I will, I will watch Let There Be Carnage at some point, uh, especially if, if there is any truth to potential MCU tie-in. Um, yeah. But I'm not in a hurry. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, um, I mean, because the biggest thing for me is if they do, if because of introducing Carnage, um, I'm kind of, I'm hoping they almost do Maximum Carnage. That was, I mean, they, there was a comic, there was a comic book, uh, or a, uh, not a comic book, but a video game based on that back when I had a Sega Genesis, um, which was a Spider-Man Venom team up uh, to to stop Carnage. So yeah. either way, I hope you quick can call out from one of our viewers. The new Venom and Carnage Lego bus are dope. If you haven't seen them, check them out. I haven't seen them. Oh, I, I have not seen them. Either. I will yeah. look at them, look for them right after this episode. <laughs> yeah, I need so, <laughs> I need to get one of those. So, James, what random knowledge do you have for us this week? 
Okay, uh, this random knowledge is actually from the Guinness Book of World Records. The uh, first person to ever be convicted of speeding was going eight miles per hour. Speed limit was five, I'm guessing? Speed limit was actually two. Um, so uh, according to the book, Guinness Book of World Records, the first person to be charged with speeding was Walter Arnold of the English village of Paddock, Paddock Wood in Kent. Uh, on January 28th, 1806, or, well, 1896, Arnold was spotting going four times the speed limit in the, his 19th century bends. Uh, but since the speed limit was, at the time, just two miles per hour, that meant he was going too fast by today's standards. <laughs> the constable had to chase him down on his bicycle. <laughs> Uh, and he issued him a ticket for four pounds, seven pence, and uh, earning Arnold uh, earning Arnold the speedy distinction for, you know, to, yeah, first eight miles per hour. Who knew? So. Yeah, that is, uh, to me, this is one of those times where I'm going to say that segment should have been called useless knowledge. Hey, it's random. Random. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now you no. can, hey, you can drop that on somebody. Like, hey, you know, uh, do you know what the first person speeding went eight miles per hour? You know, you can just drop that at some random point. Who knows? Sure. <laughs> sure. Why not? So, uh, James, have you got caught up yet on Secrets of Heritage House? I could lie to you and say yes, but no. Uh, you're killing me, Smalls. So episode three just aired on Sunday and it'll be available on uh, all of your favorite podcasting platforms this Saturday. Um, I will tell you this last week I recorded a scene for an upcoming episode that I am super excited to hear. Um, it was, it was intense and it was a lot of fun. So um, you need to get caught up if you yeah. haven't already. Yeah. Uh, I'll work on that. Because, uh, yeah, this week I get a week off from recording, uh, which is nice. It's our, you know, kind of mid-season or whatever break. Um, but we're back at it next week. So Secrets of Heritage House, if you haven't started listening, please go listen to season one. It's important. But hurry up and get to season two because that's where I'm in it. <laughs> the most important person. Damn right. <laughs> so, uh so we've been teasing for a couple of weeks now, uh, our, our special guest for today. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, I've known this guy for, uh, more too long, longer than I would like to, <laughs> to, to, I, I mean, I've known him almost as long as I've known you. Yeah. Uh, now I, prior to today, I, I will not have seen or really had a direct verbal conversation with, uh, for over a decade, I think. And, uh, you know, in high school, um, I, I, I tortured him. I, <laughs> no, were, I, you guys it were was so bad. You guys were bad. I, and I, when I think back on it now, like obviously, you know, in today's society, I would have, you know, probably been suspended or bully or whatever. Yeah. When I think about it at the time though, a lot of it was like, fun and it was stuff people did to me uh you know i can remember being tied upside down to a pole outside of the theater uh <laughs> by the four horseshoes um you know the the one thing that i that i ever did to joe mag um that i look back on and there are two things that i did to him that i'm like oh crap like you know one <laughs> one was we put him in a trash can <laughs> And this and we and we closed one. it. We closed the lid, and this was <laughs> planned. Like we we were filming a segment of me torturing him, and, and we were going to show it at an award ceremony for the end of the year. <laughs> and so throughout the whole film, I'm just doing stuff to pick on him. And so it was planned. We put him in this trash can, and we were going to roll it down a hill. And uh, what we didn't plan for was the trash can to go directly into a metal pole, and kind of 
you know, hit pretty hard. It's like you hear the trash can hit the pole and then you hear Joe hit the trash can inside. Um, so, so that instantly instant regret. I, I felt really bad about, um, and the other, I'm not going to go in too much um, because I feel like it might have been a little traumatic. Um, but uh, while working on a show uh, in high school, Assassins, um, there there was a day where uh, Joe had missed an entrance and the director flipped. Uh, H, God, God rest his soul, uh, he flipped out and, and was yelling and cussing and... Um, I, I was mad at Joe. I was pissed because he missed this entrance and got us all yelled at. And I was like, how do I get back at this guy? And, uh, he, he used to, uh, go to tilt an arcade at the local mall and collect different, uh, toys. Uh, one of which, uh, wasn't a stuffed alligator he had. And, uh, he, I found it, he had left it somewhere and, um, I, I disemboweled it and uh hung it on the set and again almost instant regret the second he saw it and i saw his reaction i felt really bad um and and so i am thankful that joe is willing to to join us today i'm thankful he's willing to come onto this show even after all the terrible things i've done to him um and and you know, I saw him about a decade after high school. Uh, I had moved down to SoCal. He was living down in SoCal and we met up and it was nice. We, we went bowling and um, it, it was nice to hang out with him. And uh, just like it's nice to hang out with you whenever I get to see you in person, it's like no time has passed. It felt like that very much. And I, I can say I did not torture him at all, I, I think. I'm sure he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I tortured him in any way during that visit. So uh, I want to bring him in. Um, Did you beat him at bowling? I honestly don't remember. Probably, <laughs> maybe, because I, I mean, I was rolling, r- running bowling alleys at the time. I honestly yeah. don't remember. Uh, but I want to bring him in. Joe Mag, I think you're out there. Come on into the show and join us, please. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh, I, there, I, I, there I, he is. I kept expecting there to be kind of that, like the Maury Povich. Here's Joe Mag backstage being like, "Here's the." <laughs> 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 oh man! So, so Joe, how much do you remember of my torturing you? I remember. Well, okay. There's a few parts on that. Um, the 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 trash can thing was, I feel most like partially my fault as well because i mean i knew i was i knew we were doing the video and all that that bits of it so I, that was not like a total surprise i'm lucky that i remember like like while i was feeling it moving to kind of brace myself a little bit um and then when it hit it was it wasn't really it wasn't anything it was more so like what the fuck was it <laughs> um what was that guys um and uh yeah the alligator thing was a little bit rough but you know I, it was it was only as rough because I was so new to the to to it. It was my first show, and I didn't know what to expect. And I was in a real rough place around the whole. Around, yeah, I felt guilty about what what had happened. He yelled. It was yelled at me. You know, I think it was definitely like this is all you know on on all of y'all, but really you and like, um, and so I, um, you know, I, you can only be bothered about that sort of thing so much. I mean, it, if anything, you know, I brought up a lot of my resolve. I would did theater for the rest of my high school career. Uh, you know, I was very much emboldened to be like, I, I am here because I want to be a part of this and because I'm passionate about this and nothing is going to, you know, kind of pull me from that. So, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, it, hard, and I, but- I will say, I will say, as far as a, a performer is concerned, you were... I don't know if you still are, but you were an extremely talented individual. Um, and, and I think that's part of why we probably did give you a lot of crap. You were a freshman and you were given a, a larger role and, um, you know, put you through the ringer a little bit. Yeah, a, a little, a little uh, you know, a little hazing, whatever. As you, as, as you were saying earlier, like the stuff that might not have fl- flown, you know, uh, <laughs> in, in, in this day and age, but, uh, you know, back, back, back in the early aughts was, you know, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and in no way 
in no way am I standing by my actions or trying to say that they are or were acceptable at the time. I'm just simply <laughs> saying that through the lens of time, things may have been a little I'm bit more acceptable. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I, uh, uh, officially absolve, never lose sleep on it again. You know? Thank you. Thank you. I, I, did, I did lose some sleep uh, last night thinking about this today. And I was like, uh, I need to own some of this stuff. So now I got that, that was, out of the way. That was all pre-social media too. Oh, oh! If that was on like a YouTube or something like that, uh, yeah, we might be having a different, a different discussion. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I would I, love to find that video we made. You know, after I graduated and came back, that you know, you and me on the basketball court in the middle of the night and trying to help you find love or whatever it was. Oh, uh, we made a lot of weird videos then. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, that was camcorders too. That was no, that was no uh, camera phones or nothing. I, there's so, so many times I thank my, oh, I feel bad for the kids today that they have to deal with that, you know? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we know you, but our audience doesn't know you. So uh, do me a favor and in, in 10 minutes or less, tell us about yourself. Give us your background uh, leading up to the point of your involvement in the gaming industry. Anything you want. The floor is yours. Sure. Um, my name is Joe Magdalena. Most people just call me Joe Mag. Uh, I am a game designer at uh, Niantic. Uh, and also just for a little quick summary, all, everything I say here is only my opinion. It's not reflected the uh, Niantic Incorporation or anything related. Anyways, uh, I grew up in... Uh, the fine print. Yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my uh, uh, car, dis uh, car dealer disclaimer. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I grew up in the East Bay with these guys in a little town called Newark, California. Uh, and I, you know, did, did theater all through high school, how, how, how I met these guys. Um, I was class of 2004, 2001, right? Or, and, and 2000 yeah. for James. 2000, yeah. 2000, 2000 yeah. For James. Um, and uh, then I went to uh, Long Beach. I was so, in high school, I was doing both theater and also doing a lot of video production things. I was in this program called the Media Communications Academy. It was basically like a magnet program inside of the school where we did most, this is a crazy thing, we did most of our, our homework on computers. We like did book reports in PowerPoint and like that was the whole like, their whole shtick, which yeah, obviously pretty, pretty commonplace now, but then it was very, very revolutionary. Um, and I had a lot of access to like video editing bays. I did a lot of stuff in Final Cut Pro and became kind of a, a, a savant in yeah, both kind of theater and video. And actually in my, my graduating year, I won the arts award uh, for, for video and, and theater. Uh, and then that's a great, still, still a great proud moment where kids hated it. But, <laughs> um, and then yeah, after that I was thinking I'm gonna be, I wanted to lean actually more into doing film. I really enjoyed the, like, the process of being in, a, in an editing bay and working and noodling and all that. And then, uh, so I went to Cal State Long Beach, uh, started working and doing like a, a film degree. And I actually, I was not a great college student. I, uh, but during that period, I found an application, or I, I was just, searching on, I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft at the time. This is, yeah, 2004, fall of 2004. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I was just kind of started, just starting to blow up. And I'm looking at their website on their, on their career page, and they were looking for night shift game testers and people that, like, you know, bottom rung will play the game from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Um, <laughs> uh, affectionately referred to in our space as a stripper shift. Um, and... Uh, we, uh, or, or night shift, but we, that was a uh, thing. And uh, yeah, we showed up, uh, I, 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 I went in, I applied for that because I was some passion in the company. I had a little experience doing datas and stuff, but I never really worked in the, in the game industry. I'd worked at like, uh, I'd worked at Circuit City Retro there for a few years. <laughs> what? Circuit, Circuit City? City. <laughs> yeah, I sold computers. I was a damn good computer salesman. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, I went and applied for that and I got the job and started doing that. And I was like, oh, I can totally make this work. I work from seven to four. I sleep from five to nine. And then I go to class from 10 to six. And then I was also working at the college radio station at the same time. So I go do my radio show at like one o'clock and then uh, I was the associate manager for the channel, so then I did uh, scheduling, and then I went to uh, work, and that was uh, my crazy cycle. Uh, eventually, yeah, everything started to fall away other than the game thing. I started to really love, love, love my job there, love the company, and um, 
yeah, I mean, that kind of brings me up to my involvement. And I was there at Blizzard for, for 14 years uh, through a lot of different roles, eventually coming up to, to game design. But uh, if you want to talk more on that experience, that's, that's the, the short view of me, Joe Mag, who I am, what I do, up through uh, when I became a, a game uh, industry professional. Okay, so you, you mentioned Blizzard, and you were there for quite some time. Mm-hmm. How, and you mentioned kind of your how you got into Blizzard, uh, working on WoW. Uh, so what made you decide to go to Long Beach, to leave NorCal, go to SoCal? Um, was it purely for the school, or was there other motivations there? I mean, I wanted to, you know make a move and I wanted to come down to Southern California and I I think I applied I applied to a lot of uh I came down because they they let me in uh <laughs> how many others or um there wasn't a ton I applied for but I had heard they had a pretty good film school at Long Beach State although it wasn't until I really got down there that I realized like you had to have like three years of credits before you even three years of credits at like 3.7 to even start in their film program. Oh, wow. Uh, and I was bored. I got to a point that was like, I'm taking all these classes that don't have anything to do, especially coming off of the, the MCA where I was, I was in an editing bay every day and like working and really like honing my craft by, by doing. And then it was like, okay, great. You, you can't do any of that. You can't use any of our facilities. You can't do these classes until you've done, you know, two years of Italian, three years of English, like, uh, this many like prereqs and yeah he really quickly the calculus shook out quick of like I'm I'm doing what I'm doing here at Blizzard is is scratching this itch of creation and working in in, in a creative field um, and and school isn't and also the game industry generally does not um, uh, care about degrees like as a rule so I found up found a good space found a good time and yeah and that was what kind of really like, drove me to be like as a part of that there yeah a lot of colleges i heard a lot of colleges do that like you know you go down there and it's just like oh no you have to do all this before you can even you know even touch a camera or whatnot it's like bro i was doing that all in high school man like (laughs) that should count for something yeah exactly like those could have been some amount of the prereq like yeah i I know how how this stuff works don't don't you know <laughs> well, yeah. and especially considering all of those classes that you were having to take, uh, th- those don't help you to gain any knowledge about holding a camera or uh, anything like that. So that's that's crazy. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. So, did you end up finishing a degree or no? Nope. 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 I, my, I, uh, me, I, I, I am a, a proud Cal State Long Beach dropout, like Spielberg before me. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're alumni in in the dropout of that. Hey. Um, and you know, it also gets to a point that it's your once your career gets beyond a certain point, it's it's you know, minimal. unless you really want to make like a career change or like I don't know, I want to go like you know, become like edu- do do education for it or something like that. You know, that would no, be I, one that would maybe push me to go back. Is if I wanted to like go and be like a game development professor or something like that. You know. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100. percent I mean, you know, I I went to school for a while and hated it. Didn't get a degree. I was able to work in the private sector, uh, work my way up into management, senior level management. Um, and uh, then I went to go work for the lovely state of Nevada and found out, oh, I can't get any higher than where I am without a degree. So now I'm probably going to go back to school just so I can have uh, some letters next to my name. And it's unfortunate because I've got a crap ton of experience, just as you do. <laughs> uh, the, nice thing, the nice thing about the private sector, though, is uh, a lot of places don't necessarily care about those letters. But, yeah, and, and, and the game industry in a lot of ways even kind of I mean, they, they like if you have a degree, they don't care if you have any, like, game development degrees. Like, unless it's from, like, there's, like, two schools that anyone cares about. But, like, everything what else. What schools is, are those, Joe, for our listeners? Uh, you, they, USC Games is well regarded. If you go there, you're doing good, you know, I will, uh, they, they're, they're very much the kind of, like, artsy, evolving the medium of games and, and, and very high thinking in that. Uh, and then there is DigiPen up in Seattle um, that they are run in part by uh, Nintendo. And they're like oh, a really, no. they're, they're, they're a really good pipeline. If you went into like, if you went into Microsoft, if you went into um, into Nintendo as a Westerner, it's through DigiPen. That's cool. nice. I never heard of that school. That sounds dope. <laughs> yeah, you could, uh, and they are, and they they are fully specialized in in game. They're like a a uh, an art school for for games. 
So we're going to take a quick dance break. And when we come back, I want you to walk us through your time at Blizzard. But before that, let's dance break. <laughs> that might be our best dance break so far. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we're back. So we talked about how you joined Blizzard team. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, tell us about your time there, your 14 years there, the different projects you were involved with, and, and at what different levels. Sure. Uh, so uh, let's say I came up, came up through the trenches in QA. I started out as a game tester on, uh, on World of Warcraft, working that, that, that late, late shift. Eventually moved over to, to day crew. You become full-time. You become a QA analyst is like how that evolves. And then there's a whole tier system of becoming QA analyst. One, two, three, depending on the amount of work that you do, the amount of involvement you have in projects. You sort of move up of like you're just running checklists or you're writing checklists. Uh, that's actually one thing a lot of people don't know. Well, so QA, a big part of what you do is run a checklist. So like in World of Warcraft, you get a, okay, you're going to run the fireball checklist. You have to get in game and play fireball rank one. Does it do 35 damage? 35 damage. Yes. Okay. Rank two, does it do 50 damage? 50. Okay. Yes. Three, 70. 100. Oh no, hang on. Got to write a bug. And like, that's how that all processes. And it happens in like a lot of different ways of like, you know, we figure out like where trees are placed, how long an encounter is supposed to take. Like, you know, the developers write all of these like, you know, requirements and figure out how the game is supposed to work. And we kind of interpret that and build from it and create test cases and make sure it's all working. Um, and Blizzard QA is humongous, like larger than like, God, I think actually Blizzard QA right now is bigger than Niantic, than, than where I'm at right now, just in terms of, of raw people. Um, and just because there's so much content and so much that needs to be done. So as I evolved through the pieces, I started to, you, you became a, a, a specialist, which means I take a big part of the game and like focus on it directly. Uh, I was on environments for WoW Cataclysm. I was on WoW for, for, for a large part of my career there. Um, and that meant I uh, went through all the environments and figured out like, you know, where all the trees are supposed to be, where all the graveyards are supposed to be. Uh, there, were, there was all these interesting processes about how you make a building. Like a building is a collection of all of these parts and props. And then that becomes its own prop. And then that gets placed in the world. Wow. So if you find a bug in one hut that is hut three, you will find that same bug in all of the other hut three. Um, That's crazy. And, and yeah, and kind of figuring out that that side of it. It's very much about kind of pulling it apart, bringing it together. Um, and then uh, I, they announced this game. Well, I did a little bit of work with like StarCraft II, helping them out on like overtime and all that sort of thing. There was actually a pretty easy thing to be like, hey, we're working Saturday these this time. You know, come if you want to help us out, come and we'll give you pizza and pay you a lot of money on overtime. Um, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Pizza yeah. and money? That's always uh, a good deal. Here for it. Uh, I was always here for our first Saturday shift. And, you know, just to quickly, like, dip in, because that's such a, you know, big controversy, big co- topic of discussion within it. You know, I worked a lot of overtime at Blizzard, a lot of time, at, at, uh, especially on World of Warcraft. They crunched. They crunched hard. I've heard they get better, but it's still generally, like, the couple of months leading up to the launch, you will work six days a week, um, 60-hour weeks, like, and that's just sort of... Uh, I mean, it's kind of great in QA because you get you get overtime money. And that's really kind of how you make your make Southern California livable um, mm-hmm. at the at those rates. Um, yeah. I worked the worst was always Burning Crusade. Burning Crusade, I think I worked almost like three months straight. Uh, and the oh, here's a fun thing in uh, in California labor law. I always love talking about. Um, you can work. Um, 13 days in a row, but you cannot work seven days in a row because a calendar week in California is Sunday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you can start working on Monday, Saturday, Sunday to Friday and 13 days there. You cannot work Sunday to Saturday. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. I I I remember that. I remember that. Um, So that was always an interesting part of that process. But anyways, uh, I, uh, they announced this game called Hearthstone. It was this, the digital magical card game. And I saw that and I was like, I gotta be on this project. I got like, the, everything about this is like speaking to me about like a bit of whimsy, a bit of cool like vibe. And yes, please involve me with this. And I like, you know, I, 
I wined and dined everyone that was involved in that QA team to be like, put me in this, I want to be in this. And then uh, I did end up getting a, a, a QA assistant lead. So it's, it's uh, you know, analyst, specialist, assistant lead, lead for QA. Nice. Um, and I was, I was assistant lead for, for Hearthstone. I was really involved with our getting out, <laughs> the game out on tablets, getting the game out on phones. I worked a lot with uh, all of our, uh, we, we had a lot of vendors, had a lot of, uh, we brought in third party to help us test on multiple devices. I learned so, so much about phones and tech and everything through that whole process. Uh, I went in a big uh, Apple fanboy and then we introduced the game on Android. And I had to test on a bunch of Android phones, and I came out a big Apple fanboy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, because if you want to test on, on uh, Apple, on, on iDevices, I you have to test on like eight. And you've tested on everything. All the iPads that are out there, all the phones that are out there. Uh, Android, there are 20 devices called, called the uh, Galaxy 10. Mm -hmm. like, because they all have different chipsets, different video cards, different amounts of stuff, different provider stuff. And... It blows, um, but uh, that's that's my that's my rant on that. Um, and then I kind of I kind of hit an end of a road where I like I wanted to be a producer because I wanted to like be involved in creation and everything. And a lot of the QA pipeline kind of like pushes you up to be a producer because like you're doing tasks and writing up tickets and writing bugs. So therefore, you know organization. And I got to this point, I realized, wow. I hate production. I hate being that, that part of being a producer. Uh, and after a number of failed uh, uh, applications in being production, I was like, you know what? If I want to like make games and be in the room to, to make games, I want to be actually a design. I want to learn game design. And actually, I started taking online courses to do um, game design, Unity, and uh, really started learning and, and really kind of falling in love with the whole process of making stuff. I did a lot of game jams where you make a game and like, 48 hours and see how you can challenge yourself and scope and build all that. And once I got to that point, I was like, this is what professional game designers do. This is what this goes. And I started building out a little portfolio of these games I made, you know, in, in a weekend, in a week and like kind of, kind of beef that up. And then on the Hearthstone team, they had a, actually as a part of this, while I was learning this, I actually left leadership. I actually was like, you know what, make me, a, make me an analyst. I'm out of, I'm done, you know, managing people, managing test cases, this sort of thing. I will fill out your checklists, but I need to focus on my own creation and my own work. And I did. And honestly, like maybe only like eight months later, they have a position opens up and it's like, we need a live content designer. We need someone who can take on Hearthstone. We have these things called tavern brawls mm -hmm. where we like twist the rules and make something wacky with the systems. Uh, we need someone who can make that stuff fast. And um, I was like, that is my entire portfolio. And I actually like talked to some people on the team on like how tavern brawls were made and using some of the stuff that I had within QA was able to make my own like brawl and actually have the content ready. So during the interviews to be like, not only am I qualified for the thing, here's something that can be like implemented like day one. <laughs> nice. Oh, baby. <laughs> and, the game, and actually that role was for mid-level and I applied for it and did this whole process. And I was like, I just want you to know that I'm interested in. I don't even care if I get this. This is be me telling you, this is my path. This is what I'm working on. Um, and they brought me in as associate level. They actually like kind of like oh, made a newer, lower version of the position for me to come in as, as entry. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm super happy they did that. Uh, you know, and that kind of like what launched my current career of doing proper game design. That's been the last four or five years um, that I've been doing purely uh, game design and, and you know, building, 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 building. Um, and yeah, I'm loving it. This is, this is like really what I feel in a lot of ways, like what I'm kind of born to do. Yeah, yeah, man. So, uh, so you worked for Blizzard for quite a while, as we kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. um, then you made the move over to Niantic. Now, mm -hmm. so why why did you make that move? And and kind of tell us about uh, what you're doing, what you're doing over there. Well, there's a lot of reasons. There's there's some 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 macroy stuff that I like. You know, was starting to, you know not like a lot of directions. Some of the larger teams were going in a lot of the way the company was growing and. I, I was not super excited for a lot of the future of the project I was working on. And I was like, I could be doing this and be working on Hearthstone for forever and, and just making content. But I, if I want to really advance where I'm at in my career, I need to start on something kind of from the ground up. And, you know, this position that was there was on a smaller team on something that was much more early, much more alpha. 
and has given me an opportunity to really get like hands on in the guts of systems to be like, you know, like building an inventory system from the ground up, something I would have never had the opportunity to do on, uh, on, on Hearthstone. And um, there was other, I mean, really one of the biggest reasons is I was living in Los Angeles uh, for the past eight years and driving to Irvine every day, 50 uh, miles each way. That's um, painful. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I was able to convince myself, I was able to delude myself that like, this is my, you know, my me time. I would listen to podcasts. I, you know, it, it was going against traffic. So it was only, you know, long, but maybe only like an hour, 10 each way. And I know people in LA who, that takes them that to get across town. <laughs> so, um, actually, it's funny. So um, my, uh, my wife works uh, in, in El Segundo, which is on the west side near the airport. And uh, I had to once do um, jury duty, which is right near the end of the airport for a couple of weeks and had to make that drive. I was like, I will drive to Blizzard a million times over to not go from West Hollywood to, to El Segundo. Um, <laughs> It's all streets and it's all, but so, um, but anyways, but yeah, and, and this new job was actually much closer. It was like in Culver city, which is like 20 minutes south of me. Uh, and then, yeah, and I made this big change. I was like, yeah, I'm going to save so much on my commute and my time. My commute went from an hour to an hour and 15 to like 15 minutes. Perfect. And then the work from home. And now my commute is zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yay, but, COVID! Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then that's kind of what what uh, what brought me here to Niantic. Um, yeah, it's a cool company. I really like it. it. It reminds me a lot of a lot of Blizzard in a lot of ways. It has a lot of this very these these core values. This really like you know big mission, big ideas about you know getting AR out into people, getting people out into. Actually, was, that was an interesting thing that surprised me when I first came on. They are very passionate about the walking side of things that they are very passionate about the like that we are I think the mission is adventures outdoors on foot which is really like that you know uh, yeah. it's interesting because I think there's like a bigger space of them being like this fantasy fulfillment but I think that that's cool that they really like lean into the the making the world it's very it's very Silicon Valley making the world a better place you know vibe <laughs> on that yeah and yeah. I can speak to that specifically I mean James and I lived together for a while in the Bay Area yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we love playing Ingress, which is one of your guys' three games. Um, and, you know, we, we would go out and walk around the, 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 the hood that we lived in um, <laughs> to, to go collect different portals and everything and, and to try and take over areas. Uh, and, you know, I even probably we, got a lot we more would... exercise because of it. Yeah, even when we'd go, uh, even when we'd go to other places, we'd end up walking around finding portals and stuff. So that was yeah. So we did, a, <laughs> we did a quite a bit of walking. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, I, I think I think you see really quick. I think it's like there's an easy way to take a bit of it's like oh, it's just you know like making Pokemon real or all this sort of thing. But I think it's that experience what you're talking about, like really getting together as a group and, and really experiencing this kind of alternate alternate reality together you know even if you're not using like air cameras and all that stuff but just a sort of alternate layer on top of the world you get such yeah. a, a unique experience you only get with uh with that type of game and i i think um because you guys did pokemon go i mean that was i was blown away um i remember i was i was doing a group thing out in a park in san jose and all of a sudden like all these people were coming through. I guess I don't know if there was a uh, I don't know if there was like a special Pokemon there or whatnot, but it was just so crazy to see all these people just out and and walking around and and being. But they were like these small groups together, and they were just they were like, oh, I, there's it's over here, like you know. And so it was just it was crazy just to see just to see that. And I was just like, man, that is nuts. The summer of Pokemon Go was so wild. That that first summer of like getting it, it just felt. It was the most I've ever met my neighbors. It was the most I've ever you know, um, really gotten out there. I went down to like Santa Monica Pier during that period and like just like saw huge crowds of people kind of going just up and down the beach in like in flocks mm -hmm. catching stuff. So I mean, it's interesting. It's 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 tough because it's like such a lightning in a bottle sort of moment, you know. And, and, you know, you want to think about like, well, what really reproduced that? What were the moments about that? Why, why only then? What does, you know, how can you, how can you reproduce that? And I think it's, it's certainly the great unanswered, unanswerable question, perhaps, as we, we continue to look it up in the, the new properties, you know? 
Yeah, you're like, ah, ah, oh, almost had it. But no, but yeah, no, that was that was a straight up phenomenon. I, I remember when that hit, I was just like blown away. And man, nothing nothing ma- nails the fantasy, the, the, the real fantasy of being a Pokemon, like and that Pokemon trainer and having that exist in the real world. Like yeah. that, that's, I think that's the biggest part of the, of the Magic Ball. It's very, that it, that, that, that IP just, just dovetails into it so nicely. Yeah. No. Um, now, now I know uh, you can't probably t- get into specifics, but is there anything on uh, on the horizon in the gaming industry? And it, I mean, anything that you guys are working on that you know we should keep a lookout for? Uh, well, we just revealed a few weeks back that we're working on some Hololens projects. We're starting to get out there to few to see like how we can really like add this this AR layer to everything. I mean, this is the thing with, with Niantic. They are really kind of at, at, at our hearts a an AR company of yeah. finding ways to to augment the world. They came out of originally, a, a, they were a Google Glass project when they first started and before they split off and to become, become their own company. And so, I, you know, within that lens, I think a lot of that view is how we can how we can make that, how we can learn the lessons from Google Glass, of like, you know, how we make that not weird um but well but 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 also like make your day-to-day life experience that much more valuable without you know and, and that much more interesting without you know i mean there's a lot of black mirror ways you can think about that 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 world going and being i would trust niantic more than a lot of companies to um uh be good citizens about that sort of thing about like you know how we we put a new world in front of your view at all times you know for the people that want to have like Pokemon just running around the world all the time, um, who, who who wouldn't? Uh, <laughs> I'd be down. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's some of that future that we're working on 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 that side of things, um, and yeah, obviously a lot of like you know, tons and tons of projects, everything all NDA to to heck and back, you know. But that's the that's the industry. I've seen a big thing that was like the uh, or there's a great pin going around says like all my best work is under is uh, under NDA. <laughs> that, oh, I feel bad for some. There's a lot of people out there in the industry who just like have worked on like 18 projects that they can't talk about. Like their resume is like it's a cool thing at Ubisoft, cool thing at like you know uh, uh, EA. It got canceled, but it was really awesome. I did levels for it. Like you know, I'm I'm actually that's one thing I was lucky from from the time when I was at Blizzard and the, being on Hearthstone when I was that I was able to output a lot of content on a super fast loop. The way Tavern Brawls worked, I was like. Uh, I could make something and have it in front of players in like six weeks or less, wow. um, which is unheard of. And 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 I could like respond to feedback on that instantly because it could be like, oh, you guys like that that mechanic, but not that mechanic. Okay, I can make that for the next one. And like really like, you know, I think that helped me a lot, even as a as a, just a designer, being able to like loop and iterate that quickly. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. So. So, Joe, before we go into the next question, we always like to try and offer our guests the opportunity to plug something. Uh, it can be anything you, you want. Uh, that's up to you. Do you have anything you want to plug or share with our audience? Uh, sure. I mean, best things you can do, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at uh, J-O-E-M-A-G underscore games uh, and this is Joe, Joe Mag Games. Uh, I'm also on Instagram with all that same stuff. If you go to my Twitter, you'll find my card and that's where I've got like all my different links. Uh, I've been doing a lot of personal, uh, 3d art. I'm available for commission. If you want to do, uh, you, you've got, if you're like a, a, uh, vaporwave artist or something like that and you want some cool spacey skeleton loops, I can, uh, I'm, I'm your guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, and that was that. I'm also on uh, on Instagram uh, for actually that's Joe Mag. Same thing, J O E M A G underscore art. Um, you can find most of my portfolio there. Um, and yeah, you know, play uh, play the anti games. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, make, hey, make sure you send that to us, and we'll, we'll we can put it up on the page. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we know each other from high school and where we, we did performing arts, we did theater. And uh, so what is, if any, your involvement in that today? And uh, what's the, the last show or, or thing you worked on? And um, do you miss it? I do miss it. The last thing I worked on was, I guess... Um, God, probably would have been that uh, Loney West Side story. I think that we did. Were you in that production? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the contemporary West Side. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a long time ago. That was the yeah. last thing you did? That was, the la- that was the last major, like, production I did, yeah, because I didn't do any in college. And once I started working in games, like, because of the, the overtime thing, oh, let me yeah. actually, just to quickly double back on that, I never crunched on Hearthstone. Like, that was a big thing within that, that well, I never crunched in development. I crunched on, on QA. But um, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, with that schedule, it was, it was impossible to be, even do, like, so, A, there's just not a lot of rep theater in, uh, in L.A., um, there's plenty of improv, but then you're in the the improv thing. Um, you're that that cult of itself. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, I have found a lot of I have found performance. I have found creation in in game dev. Like a lot of the cool stuff I I the coolest stuff I have done has been like I have a big presentation, big PowerPoint presentation, and I make a whole like uh, performance out of it. Um, I remember one that was really proud of was I did a pitch for um, I wanted to do a raid in Hearthstone, do a, where you fight a Lich King with a million health, like, and, and have everyone kind of working together for it. And I had a whole big musical score, and I came out and I had my like hood up, and I was like, "You must face against Atlas," <laughs> and. Um, and I, 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 I sold it, baby. Um, uh, so the performer's still in there. Oh, yeah. absolutely. He, he, oh, yeah. and I, I think in design, you kind of have to have a little bit of that heart, a little bit of that, that you know, what, what gets at the emotions, you know, to get people into, the, into your world. Yeah. So. That's dope. Uh, but yeah, I would love to get back into it to do more of it. I, every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll pop out of a, a voice acting. Uh, uh, audition now and again, you know, as I said, I, we kind of talked about this beginning. I have a very, very robust audio setup now, you know, mm-hmm. hang on, hang on. I even got that nice sweet reverb on my board and everything ready for a good, you know, <laughs> when I'm doing a nice crew or whatever. But, nice. Um, <laughs> I use that for, uh, I do uh, uh, singing with uh, people over Zoom and everything. I've gotten to the, the Zoom cabaret. I guess that's probably the closest performing arts things I do these days is uh, I do uh, Zoom cabarets. So what's your go-to song? Uh, well, it depends on the audience. I, I have my way that will push you to the back of the room. Like if we're in a karaoke thing where everyone will be like, Oh, it's my way. And then I hit those big notes at the end of it. And just like, what the hell? Um, you know, it, it depends on the energy of the crowd. I can do a good sweet Caroline. Um, yeah. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Uh Oh, uh Oh. What's he got for us? Uh oh, is that a Kermit the Frog? Why oh. are there so many songs about rainbow? Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I, I have a cut that I use for this that I've used on this for uh, a couple performances where um, I sing both parts, and so it sounds like I've got like a duet of it. Uh, I, I, I sing live, but I have a recorded Kermit to give the uh, to get a good harmony with myself. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. COVID has given us all too much time, huh? Yeah, exactly. Too much. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, real quick. So I, I know. See, I didn't really. I, I didn't. I worked with you after the fact, and I, I, I kind of met you through Mark in high school. Uh, I was already gone. I think at that. Yeah, I was already gone at that but, point. But you never really left. I never really left. People knew me, um, but I do know. I do know that you definitely had an affinity for alligators back then. Uh, and, and, you know, do you still, do you still have that affinity or, and, and, and if possible, do you still have that alligator? No, I do not have that alligator. Oh. I, really I mean, they were like dime store uh, arcade prizes. Um, and it was, it was just the only one that I liked. And it, it was the only thing in their like prize wheel that like was like kind of good looking. Um, so, and I had gotten good at like one machine at the, at the, at the tilt arcade, rest in peace. Uh, but with, you know, I still, I still like, it's like a, it's like a jewelry shop now. And every time I back in town and go to new park and see like what used to be my, my old stomping ground arcade. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I was just collecting them because of gag and like had my little, my little line above them. But, uh, I think, I think what you just saw there is probably the extent of my current, uh, stuffed animal collection, you know. <laughs> Plenty of like weird BS statues that Blizzard gave me over the years and years, but uh <laughs> so what was the name of the alligator? Was it King Louie? 
It was, I was going through a very big um, uh, Godfather sequence at the time. Uh, so it was, v- it was Vito, Vito the Mafia Alligator. Yes, <laughs> yes, I knew it was something <laughs> like that. And I still have a Mafia Alligator email address for when I don't want it to track back to like my, uh, my person. That's my, that's, I keep that as my total garbage email. That's where you sign up for all the bad websites. Yep, that's where I sign up for all the bad websites. So it's all going to mafialligator.com. <laughs> nice. Mafialligator.com. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, Joe, man, it was so good seeing you today, man. We want to thank you for joining us. Um, we will pro- we're, we're definitely going to have to call you back, you know, if something big is happening out there in the gaming industry, you can let us know what's up. And, um, Definitely, man. We appreciate you so much. So no, happy much. to chat. Happy to chat. Let me know if you guys want to chat on like the uh, the fun Apple Epic thing because that's been <laughs> real exciting lately. <laughs> always, always. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, oh, we actually still got we still got like ten minutes left, Mark. Yeah, I mean, we can uh, we can riff or uh, we can rap. We started early. I don't mind ending early. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, that's... Joe, you have anything else you want to throw out there, man? Uh, nothing huge right now, no. I mean, we got any questions. Uh, we, we've got some people in the audience that are watching. Not many, but we've got a couple. So uh, let's take a couple moments to see if anybody has any questions for Joe Mag, the game designer. Uh, also, the 3D printer. Um, we, we did learn that earlier, that you've oh. gotten into 3D printing and... Yeah, yeah. My my latest big success. I've been having a lot of fun. Is I, I'm printing uh, uh, Lilo Dallas Multipass uh, CDC card holders, um, and that's been a really fun. Uh, I a weird little cottage industry I've kind of created for it because I like printed a couple for myself and was like, "Hey, does anybody want one?" Uh, and then suddenly, oh my god, I like like tons of people were DMing me, and now I have like a, a backlog of I think I've shipped out about. 20 ish of these of these little 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 plastic uh card holders that's an awesome start how long have you been doing it just a couple weeks uh for for the the multi-pass yeah um i've been doing 3d printing for since about october um and yeah this has been a fun process you know it's it's a very um it's you know i do that it's very similar to like my my 3d work my my like like 3d artwork where it's it's all about kind of getting it set up into a good way and then letting it run for like four or five hours to like render and make and everything. And so um, you learn a lot in that process. You know, a lot of the finicky parts of it, what filaments work, what works for what scale, like, you know, a, uh, you know, a, yeah. one, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm always been a hobby collector, you know, and this I, is just a new one. I'm getting to be an old man. So the whole 3d printing thing is kind of just, you know, gone right by me. <laughs> Um, it's not that I'm not interested. It's just, uh, I don't really got time, you know? Uh, and, and so seeing, seeing this and like hearing you talk about it, it definitely, you know, it sparks that, um, creative thought in me because you know, the, you're only limited by your imagination, I suppose. Right. Yeah. The, your imagination, the scale of the piece you're building, um, like, you know, what your, what your printer is like, you know, I have about like, I can make anything within like 200 millimeters squared or cubed. Uh, actually, I'm going to get a couple of my, t- my toys real quick. I'll be back in like one second. You'll love yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I, I think 3D printing is a cool in concept. I remember when they first started coming out like for home, you know, a couple of years ago. And I was like, man, I want to get one of those. But of course, I never did. And now I feel like it's just, you know, gone by. And so, you know, maybe maybe it's too late for me to uh, join in. But I guess I could just pay him to print off stuff that I want. You, know? you probably could. You probably could. Come he, back. All right. All right. What do you so have get, for us? See if you can get that friend discount. Here's my show, here's my show. <laughs> my show and tell. All right. I got a little, this is a baby Bulbasaur uh, planter. It's got oh, a little nice. on it. You can put a little, little, little plants in it. Uh, or tea got, lights. Could you put oh, tea yeah, lights perfect. in there? You know what? It might melt the plastic. Ah. Be because PLA uh, melts at a fairly low, low heat. Ah. Um, uh, I got this uh, a little little baby Yoda. Nice, nice. Grogu, 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 <laughs> Grogu with a cup. I got this is this is badass. This uh, stormtrooper helmet with a busted out skull in it. Oh, that's that's dope. cool. Yeah, and that's I read dope. This uh, this filament that I use for it has got kind of an ombre to it, so it turns like a gold to orange. Mm-hmm. 
and um, my my pride and joy, I printed me. <laughs> yeah, nice. that's dope. That's, that's awesome. Dope. Yeah, I did a um, a 3D scan from my iPhone has like, you know, the same stuff that it uses for Face ID. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, took a scan of my face on that, exported it out to Blender, the program I used for all my 3D art, did some touch up, built out the little plinth and then then printed it out. Like, and yeah, everyone kind of goes like, oh my God, how'd you like model it like so closely on like, like your cheeks and stuff like that. And it was like, cause that's literally a scan of my face. That's dope. That is, that is pretty awesome. <laughs> that is, man. I kind of want one of me. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking about setting up a, uh, a process for. They, they might be a little bit, uh, they, those might be, ooh, if I had the ballpark, probably 80 to 100. Um, uh, so what's, okay. the, what's, what's the friend discount look like? Yeah, what's that? that? What's, what's the that? high school torturer <laughs> discount look like on that? Are <laughs> <For> you 120? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, it doesn't look like we got any questions, which that's sad. But overall, again, Joe, man, it's so good seeing you, man. You're all grown, all grown it up now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you. Definitely, we will. We're gonna. We have to hit you up again. So all everybody out there, thank you for joining us today on Fat and Black Connection. If you missed any of this. Uh, go back and listen to us uh, via Anchor, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Google, anywhere else you get your uh, radio public is even on there. Um, wherever you get your podcast, we're probably on there. So also uh, look out for this video later on this week. This will be up just in a little while, a couple hours after we're done. So once again, thank you, Joe. Mark, it's always good talking to you, man. Indeed. And we will see you next time.